What's going on, Mintis? This is Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to do a quick overview of the Thanos Wars Infinity Origin. Thanos Wars. However you want to say this guy's name. Anyway, please stay tuned. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of this book. Now, there are two covers to this omnibus. There's this cover right here, which is the standard edition, and then there's the direct market cover which I'll pop up right here. Uh, and that is the Jim Starlin cover that is from the Avengers Annual number 7. So spine and the back all look the same. There's the Infinity Stones and the title of the book, The Thanos Wars Infinity Origin. Cashing in on maybe a movie. Uh, now let's look at the contents of the book after we look at what this looks like without the dust jacket. I really like the idea of having the Infinity Gems right there. Um, there's the Infinity Gauntlet over there on the left-hand side, which happens years, many years later, probably over 20 years later. Um, so the reason I wanted to do this overview is because some people were confused as to what this is. And what this is, is one of those books that I really don't like to get, and that is just a book that collects... A character's appearance from all over the years, but it's all over the place, too. Everything leading up to that Infinity Gauntlet omnibus over there. Most of these stories, I would say about 90% of them, are told by Jim Starlin. There's a nice forward here by Al Milgram, talking about the time that he's known Jim Starlin. Jim Starlin, of course, is the guy that created Thanos. Um, but yeah, this is a nice little introduction. I think Al Milgram goes back to when they were in middle school. And then, actually, he called the junior high back then, so that kind of tells you how old these guys are. Um, so let's kick this off, um, because there's a similar omnibus that came out a few years ago. It was called the Guardians of the Galaxy Solo Omnibus, and it collected like a lot of earlier appearances of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This one only has some of that, but it does have most of the content that that book has as far as the Captain Marvel stuff. So, what does this book collect? It collects Invincible Iron Man number 55, which is the first appearance of Thanos and also Drax. Uh, Captain Marvel 25 through 34, so a huge chunk. Marvel feature number 12, Avengers 125, and annual number 7, which like I said is that DM cover. Strange Tales 178 through 181, and I think 180 is the first appearance of Gamora. Marvel Team Up 55, Marvel 2-in-1 annual number 2, and Marvel Graphic Novel number 1. And then material from Daredevil 105 and Logan's Run 6. By the way, Marvel Graphic Novel number 1, spoilers, is called The Death of Captain Marvel. Uh, yeah, so he's dead. The original Marvel. Um, a lot of characters here from the Cosmic Saga that Jim... I mean, Jim Starlin created so many of these characters. So he started off writing an issue of Iron Man, and then he went on to do like a guest spot in Captain Marvel. He was so popular, and his characters were so popular that he went on to become the head writer. It introduced a lot of the mythos that we still use to this day with Thanos. And like I said, a bunch of other characters. And as I mentioned earlier before, some of the content was already printed in that Guardians of the Galaxy solo omnibus. However, this has a lot more stuff, and you can probably tell it doesn't have like the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon, or Groot, or Peter Quill Star-Lord. Uh, most of the artwork in the early stuff here is done by Jim Starlin. The ongoing series, Iron Warlock, which Jim Starlin took over, introduced a whole bunch of characters that later on appear in Infinity Gauntlet. So you'll recognize a lot of these, like Magus, and as I mentioned, Gamora. And let's go through here. Um, there is, like, I think the stuff from Daredevil 105 is the origin of Gamora, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's my boy Pip. You probably recognize him from Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, so all these characters got their start within the pages of these books. Now, some of the stories seem might seem a little outdated, but I think they still read pretty well. I, I still enjoy the way that Jim Starlin writes wrote these stories, and I think he introduced a lot of really cool concepts. Uh, so much so that even Jonathan Hickman was still using them during his Hickvenders run in the Infinity, of course. Run. Let's look through here. As we flip. Yeah, and then Thanos, of course, with a modernized costume. This is long before the Infinity Gauntlet, but the Infinity Stones are there. Uh, he created the Infinity Gauntlet in the pages of Silver Surfer. See? Infinity Stones. 
Uh, you have guest appearances by the Avengers. Um, also, Nitro, the guy that killed Captain Marvel and also helped blow up the new warriors in Civil War. Now, it's the second time I've mentioned Civil War in the last couple of weeks. I am not a fan of that story. Please forgive me. Um, this has, Some of this stuff has been previously collected in the Thanos versus the Avengers or uh, some of the Marvel uh, premiere books, some of the Adam Warlock stuff, some Captain Marvel trade paperbacks but some of the stuff has never been collected of course guest appearance by spider-man as you saw there beast who was with the avengers at the time and this is the classic captain marvel the death of captain marvel uh this is the first graphic novel first graphic novel how do i okay so the way that the graphic novels worked it was like a one shot that's where like god loves man kills from x-men comes from that was graphic novel number four this was number one New Mutants, what was New Mutants, number three or two, I can't remember. But anyway, that's how Marvel started doing their stuff, like, in 1982, I believe. That's when they these started coming out. Correct me if I'm wrong. So here's all the cosmic characters you probably recognize from, like I said, the Infinity Gauntlet. Or even Infinity from Jonathan Hickman's run. There's Eros, Star Fox. Okay, there is something cool. Uh, here's all the Avengers. They're all coming for... Captain Marvel's last day. This is actually a really sad story. He gets, he dies because of cancer. It's not like he died in a blaze of glory. Like this was such a cruel story. I always thought as a kid. I love the way that it ends though, um, because I know he has ties. Well, at the time, not to spoil much, in case you haven't read this. I mean, these stories come from like 1975, so um, most of these. But he is he is tied down to Earth with Rick Jones, so they have this connection there and of course here's the death scene and yeah this is a wonderful story i really like it but what i wanted to see here is to see yeah so let's let's look at here i remember this as a kid a friend of mine pointed this out let's zoom in a little bit here that jim starlin wanted everybody to appear including superman and if you look close enough, right here, you can see his boots and his cape. And there's Superman behind Wolverine. I always thought that was really cool in a really neat little way of sneaking a DC character into a Marvel book. And Jim Sterling was able to do it. And of course, to do it for the funeral of Captain Marvel. So let's look at the extras here. Here's some uncolored pages, un pages here. There's the classic cover to number 25. Yeah, lots of extra, there's lots of extras in this book. Let's see here. Captain Marvel 36 from, yeah, uh, this came out in January of 1975. Let's see, Steve, Steve Englehart, Jim Starling, and Al Milgram. Um, Okay, this was a reprint of Marvel Super Heroes number 12. There's the Watcher. Oh, man, that is cool. That's the Warlock cover. I know they reprinted some of those. That's where I've read some of these stories. Because they reprinted them later on in the 90s. Wow, that's cool. I love unink pages. This is some of my favorite stuff that they have in these Omnis. It's beautiful. Man. His art is so awesome. Okay, let's see if they have... Usually with the Spider-Man and X-Men omnibuses, they collect the reprint covers like uh, Marvel Tales or X classic X-Men. There's that cover. Death of Captain Marvel. Unused cover. Damn. Lots of freaking extras. Uh, retail price of this book, by the way, is $100. And this is the Marvel, I think this is a hand guide to the Marvel Universe. There's Nitro, Star Fox, Warlock, Deceased, at the time. <laughs> oh, how things have changed. Uh, let's see here. So here's some of the reprint covers, the special edition stuff. Yeah, so this is where I've read it. But I know they did it, they also did it in the 90s too, reprinting these stories. Most of these were done by Jim Starlin. 
Special Edition, The Life of Captain Marvel. Yeah, there was also, like I said, some trade paperbacks of the last few issues of Captain Marvel before he died. When his hair was gray and then when his hair went blonde. Okay, let's see. The Life of Captain Marvel. We're getting close to probably where they shot. I hope they kept them in here. I just opened this up a few minutes ago just to read the intro. And Memorial Pinup. Okay, and that's uh, Life of Captain Marvel. That's the trade paperback I used to have. Aha, here we go. Here's some Warlock reprints. This is what I was talking about. So before the Infinity Gauntlet, there was Warlock. So they started reprinting these. And these also drawn by Jim Starlin, who wrote Infinity Gauntlet, who wrote Infinity War, and Infinity Crusade. And introduction by Roy Thomas, John B. Cook, Oh, these are from the Marvel Masterworks. Okay. And here are trade paperbacks and hardcovers recolored from original pages. Like I said, they, these have been reprinted a lot. Avengers vs. Thanos trade paperbacks. Warlock by Jim Starlin complete collections. Thanos the final threat. I, okay, and then there's the Guardian solo classic omnibus that I was talking about. That reprinted probably about 60% of the book that's in here. So if you had that, it's, tough, it's a tough choice whether you want this or not. I love this cover. That's why I went with it. I think it's great. Uh, this is... Let's see here. Let's look at the binding of the book, though. Because I haven't had any issues with it. I haven't... Knock on wood. I haven't had any issues with any Marvel binding in a while. And that's what you want to see from these Omnis. Let's see it lay like that. And then lay flat. Book's about... Less than 800 pages, you know, so for a hundred dollars. I don't know Just wanted to show a few more pages of the artwork in case I know some people are turned off by Old-school artwork which feels weird to say because this is the artwork I grew up with but I get it You know some people grew up in the 90s some people grew up in the early odds So some of this artwork might turn some people off So that's why I like to showcase these books to make sure you know what you're getting um do I recommend it for any new readers? Yeah, if you like to follow the history of these characters, especially Thanos, this is a nice book to have because it goes from Iron Man, it bounces over to Captain Marvel, over to Avengers, and back to uh, Warlock because that's the way his story is told through chronological order until he is trapped somewhere. I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't read The Infinity Gauntlet, but Jesus, that story is about 20 years... Oh my God, yeah, a little more... It's like 25 years old. So... You know, that's this this goes from his first appearance in a chronological order and takes you all the way up until you're able to find him again in Silver Surfer when he the story called The Resurrection of Thanos. Spoilers. And that's everything included in this omnibus. So please let me know in the comments down below if you picked it up and which cover you decided to go with. Or if you decided to pass up on the omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're looking forward to the Infinity War omnibus that comes out soon, like literally this week. If this is your first time watching this channel and you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you can be told and annoyed by YouTube that we have a new video up. And also don't forget to check out our other content on this wonderful channel by myself and my other co-host. And don't forget to check out our social media like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And that's at NearMentCon. Again... This was Omar, thank you for watching, and remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.